Back again, back again. Another episode of a Muslim and an atheist breaks bread. What are you saying, pops? I'm good, man. Yeah? Yeah. But, so I was just making sure the right video was lined up. <laughs> um, so yeah, today we're going to dive into one of the things that I think not really talked about in Indian culture as much. Or it's, it's, I guess it's kind of like racism in this country, and it the caste system. People say it doesn't exist anymore, but we all know it does. Just because you don't speak on it doesn't mean that it's not there. And it, these things are like ingrained into society if they've been around for so long and they're hard to get rid of you can't just say we're not going to talk about it it's gone which is funny actually because I've seen a quote from um, I think it was Morgan Freeman or Denzel Washington one of them saying if you don't talk about racism it will vanish which I just completely disagree with but yeah I guess India's I won't say racist problem or racism or they've got a caste system. So for you that don't know what the caste system is, and I'm sure everyone watching the video does, but I'm gonna give it a stab anyway. <laughs> it's kind of how you were uh, your place in society was decided by this is what I presume as well, it was decided by your colour, but it may not be that. So we're gonna dig deep into it, see what it is. What do you know about it? Uh, yeah, it's uh, colour coded stratification. <laughs> was it colour coded though? Was it just regional? And no, then it turned no, colour coded, no, no. or have it's, we just presumed it's colour coded? It's colour coded. It is colour coded, yeah, then, yeah. It's colour coded. Alright then. Right, let's. The caste system is a traditional form of stratification from Hinduism that classifies people into four different groups. The caste one is born into will determine his or her social status, job, diet, and behavior. This 3,000-year-old system still to this day has a significant impact on Indian society. The socio-historical origin of the caste system dates back to the year 1500 BC, when the Aryans from Central Asia invaded India, creating the system as a means to control the local Indian population. Throughout the years, the system was transformed by the ruling elites and became part of Hinduism, the largest religion in India. In the 19th century, during the colonial period, the British saw the caste system as a way to maintain social stability and used it to their advantage. The Brits separated the peoples from different castes and targeted those from the lowest castes. As explained by the writer Sashi Tharoor, caste had been much fuzzier, a much more fungible identity in the past. The whole notion of the system being imposed as the only way India was supposed to be was because the British looked at it in this way. So the Brits, in the entire process of trying to understand India, classified and codified things. It was a means for controlling India. After the British left in 19... The Brits do that for better, don't Divide and rule. My Europeans, we should say, really. And it didn't do the same thing, was it? Um... Is it Uganda, Rwanda? Where's like the Tutsi and... Divide and rule, create division. They Amongst the people. Yeah, they say you conquer Divide people within. Divide and conquer, mm -hmm. 1947, the Indian Constitution was written and the caste system was formally abolished. But this social structure is still affecting Indians to this day. The religious explanation for the caste system is that each caste comes from a body part of the Hindu creator god, Brahma. Uh, according to Hindu mythology, they believe that every human, they came out from one of the most prestigious and one of the creator god, Brahma. They believe that the human itself it's, it's divided into different kind of work. It's like your head, it's for thinking. So they believe the upper caste, which came out from Brahma's mind, 
was the Brahmins, which is the first caste. Second group of people, they came from his shoulder. They were the Kshatriya. Kshatri means who are those who can fight for you. So they believe from the stomach, uh, Brahma's stomach, they came out with a third caste, that is uh, the Vaishyas. These Vaishyas are the uh, businessmen. Then they find out the legs. From legs, the fourth or the lower caste came out, that was the Shudras. Historically, there were four castes. Brahmins, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas are known as the general castes or upper castes, while Shudras was the bottom caste. One additional lower caste was recently added to the system, the Dalits, which I will talk more about later. The bottom castes are also known as the BCs, which stands for backward castes. Each caste is further broken down into 25,000 subcastes. Each subcast has a designated profession that theoretically its members must follow. For example, Mali is a subcast of the Shudras and they are gardeners. It is important to know that caste determine jobs, but also social life. For instance, one is not allowed to marry or even have social interactions with someone from another caste and people who do face discrimination. Today, the easiest way to know someone's caste is by looking at their last name. So if someone has the last name Molly, this means they are from the Molly caste. At first, people were assigned their caste according to their skill, and the next generation would inherit the caste from his or her parents. Initially, there was no social mobility, meaning that one would die in the same caste he or she was born into. Basically, the way it works is, is that if you're born a Shudra, you stay a Shudra and you do the jobs that Shudras are meant to do. So like the Brahmins are meant to, you know, say the word of God, they're meant to advise the kingdom and like people on religious matters. The Kshatriyas are the warrior class, they'll be the noblemen, they'll be involved in politics, they'll be involved in wars. But you, can, you can't have a Kshatriya convert from a Shudra, convert to a Shudra or vice versa. If you're in a caste, you stay in a caste. Those from the lower castes were not allowed to move up socially. After the legal abolition of the caste system in 1950, people were allowed to pursue any job. However, the caste system is still existent socially, and there is no social mobility. This has not always been like that. Back in the 18th century, when Maharajas ruled India, people were allowed to change their caste if permission from the king was granted. My, my caste, the gardener, before five, six generations ago, my caste was the warrior. So my great-great-grandfather, he don't want to fight to, to, to kill the people. So they went to Maharaja. They saying, we don't like to take jobs. So they saying, what you like? Then my great-great-grandfather said, we like to farm. Then Maharaja said, okay, you are today our caste, the gardener. But now we can't change the caste. Because now Maharaja don't have power. Now power is the government. So they can't change the caste. But we can change the job. Even though changing caste is not possible, it is possible for people to move up economically. There are some rich people who come from backward castes, as there are poor people from general castes. However, still today, the vast majority of the rich are from general castes, while the vast majority of the poor are from backward castes. The caste system also has its positive sides. It has helped to keep skills alive that are passed down generation after generation. Actually, it's in my family traditional, we do the painting. And in studying my great-grandfathers, they work for the royal families, for the wall painting in a fort and some of famous old temples. So last uh, seven generations, we do same work. Miniature painting. Miniature painting. Yeah. And do you do it because of your cost? Yeah, we come from especially caste that will be specialty to do painting work. I'm born in my family, so then I'm old, younger. So I just see all time the work, the paintings, colors in my house. So my hobby also convert in like this way. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason easily to be pick this line. Mm -hmm. It's big help you because my brother, my uncle, my father, they all are do this job all day. So I play with the colors in it, then I'm kids. So it's very easy to choose the color. What do you think to that? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Isn't that the way that everywhere you used to work in 
Yeah, England, yeah, they view as a yeah. farmer, your son your was son a farmer. A farmer. Yeah, your yeah, kids yeah. are effective, you're a labour force, aren't they? So similarly, in that caste system, same thing again, your kids become your labour force within your industry. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of, I guess we're seeing the benefits, the downside, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, the downside is obviously that so, so, like you said, there's no social so, mobilities there. Yeah. And that's the gonna be the ultimate downside of it. But like you say, when he was saying that like, you know, his dad was a pain to his uncles a pain mm-hmm. so me personally, I I mean, but that's just because of the way we live today. Because there is so much options for us today in it. Mm. I guess if there's not really that many options it's good to be taught that skill early and following your father's footprints especially if you know your dad can leave you the family business so he's a painter he's set up shop you're going to get the shop your son's going to get the shop there's nothing really wrong in that aspect I but it's think choice it's isn't it it's choice shop. I think it's like I said the cast would be like a neighbourhood in it so all those sufferers like live in Aston so everybody in Aston is a painter but you might do certain different kind of basket Painting. weaving. Yeah, so yeah, artistic yeah. work mm-hmm. falls within the cast. His family just happened to be the painter. Painters. Yeah, that's what I mean sometimes for his family. Isn't it? But he probably says his hobby was painting, so it came naturally to him. So if he was interested in playing piano, he'd have probably still been a painter, but just been able to play the piano as well. Yeah, definitely. On this way. Different castes also have different customs and traditions. For instance, people from the two highest castes, the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas, are not supposed to eat meat, drink alcohol, or smoke. These habits are viewed as impure and should only be adopted by the lowest castes. The upper caste people, you know, they are most, mostly they are the priests, you know, who always live in temples, you're always very close to the gods. So they are not allowed to eat meat. If they will eat meat in front of the people, people will be angry on, on them. Or they also want, they also don't want to eat the meat. And why the lower caste people they eat the meat? You know because uh, those people, you know, in the previous time uh, they were working with dead bodies. I said, you know, they don't, they were not able to find any work. So sometimes they don't have food to eat. So they started eating the meat also. However, as India progresses, people are caring less and less about caste diet restrictions. But today, do you see a difference in the diet of people from overseas? And the, the lower caste were cannibals. Oh, is it saying no, the meat of meat. the animals? Yeah, the animals. So all lower caste people working with meat. Well, no, but what you're saying is that <laughs> the lower caste people are probably more likely to be farmers, aren't it? and more like to have livestock around them than upper class people who are just in temples with vegetables. So that that's just natural, isn't it? So if you're around well, farms, like... If, again, the people in the temple are in the temple and yeah. they don't farm, must be getting the food from the farmers that they eat and then it's so away with the farmers. Be but they're vegetarians, isn't it? Because it's seen as impure. So they're not going to want the meat. Yeah, so but the poor if the farmers the grow in the meat... Yeah. Growing the vegetables for the people in the temple. Yeah. Why doesn't the farmer just eat the same food that the people in the temple eat? Because you get more sustenance from meat. Okay. So it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Because yeah, what yeah, he's but, saying is... But, but this is what I'm saying, yeah, but it's seen as a bad thing, isn't it? Like, they're saying that vegetables are cleaner and purer than meat. Mm. So society, it's seen as a bad thing for you to eat meat, but they're saying, well... That might be seen as bad, but the same practice, we're going to get more from it, so we're going to eat the meat. That makes sense. That does not make sense. Well, does the religion say they can eat meat? Because they're all Hindus, effectively, in it? So for the caste system, the higher people can't eat meat, that's what they're saying, and within the caste system, the lower caste people can eat meat. I don't think this is a religious thing. I don't think being a Hindu has anything to do with the caste system now. I think that's like a, a he social... Said, he said it kind of blends into 
Well, it, no, that's all right. So the Hindu, uh, it does come from the god and Brahman. So basically, what yeah, they're Brahman saying is was the, the, cast. Head, the head, yeah, yeah. So they're the right. different parts of the caste. So yeah, get that. But I think that's like society has adopted the rules to which each caste come. Do I don't know. We'll have to see what it says. But he hasn't mentioned that they've said that the Kani eat, although India largely is a vegetarian place, mm. largely. Mm. Is that even a word? Largely. I don't know if that's a word. General class. For what? The diet, how, what they eat. Ah, now, now, no more meaning. Still, we have like a same system, but people that don't believe now, we people are very well educated. So they, they're like that, uh, uh, they don't care about these things. They never try to follow these things, but few people they can follow, but Gen- new generation that don't care about these kinds of things. In the past, the color of the turban was determined by the caste. Nowadays, this has changed and people wear whatever they want. And all the people of the caste, they're using the turban is different. Like yellows, they used to warrior people. Pink, they used to businessmen. Brahmins, the religious caste, have a unique hairstyle called Sika, like the one you're seeing right now and they wear a piece of string around their chest. The fifth caste that was recently added to the system in the early 20th century is the Dalit caste, also known as the Untouchables, or the Harijan. This caste is considered to be an outcast. Untouchable jobs include things like handling dead animals and humans, sweeping the streets, and handling any form of human waste like blood, feces, urine, and saliva. By doing these impure jobs, they are considered spiritually polluting. In India, dirty and impure are two different concepts. Rubbish on the floor and rats may be seen as dirty, but not impure. So anyone from any caste would touch, whereas fresh human waste or dead bodies are viewed as impure. So people from higher castes would not touch it. This leads to untouchability which is the practice of ostracizing and not touching the Dalit group, hence the nickname, the Untouchables. Still to this day, the people who are doing these jobs come from the Dalit caste. The men you are seeing right now are responsible for carrying the bodies of dead cows to a dumping site. They are all from the Dalit caste. Today, Untouchables make up 16% of India's population, and this represents over 200 million people. Although untouchability was outlawed along with the whole caste system in 1950, it is still practiced to this day, especially in rural parts of India. Uh, Urban areas it is not, but yes, in uh, rural areas it's still there, where most of the cleaning work, because in India, uh, as you are aware of many villages, they don't have a toilet facility, so they are using the public toilets. And this public toilets, cleaning and everything, still the lower caste people are doing. And they have their separate colonies, they have separate houses, which is not along with the uh, normal. uh, So if every upper caste people are inside the city, these people are staying outside the city so even still nowadays in most of the uh, like no village areas these people they have their colonies separate where most of them they don't have amenities like no water no roads no toilet facilities even not even they have a security systems like other they have a police and everyone but most of these colonies are still they need more uh, points to be concerned Historically, untouchables have always been disadvantaged in comparison to other castes. They were not allowed to go to school with students from different castes, and people would refuse to work with or for them. When India was the British colony, that time uh, the lower caste people, they were not allowed to get education because of the rigid mentality, as I mentioned before. They were always considered as untouchable. They are not allowed to mingle with others. They are not allowed to play with them. They are not allowed to go to school. They were not allowed to enter temples. This is all which has come together, the kind of work they were involved with, keeping that humanity in mind. But when India received independence, the very first thing which they thought of removing 
untouchability. So Gandhi ji, I think everyone uh, know the personality. He came up and he say untouchable is not a word which we can use for them. So do you know what's crazy about this? Like, and this is just how, how society works, isn't it? But imagine if all the untouchables just down tools. You see how impure everyone become then, isn't it? <laughs> That's exactly the same thing, but differently. I was saying, well, they just work for themselves. They would raise themselves to the top level if they stopped serving everybody else and just set themselves up in it. Well, yeah, if, even if what they did for, they have to get... Well, I don't know, like, it depends. It's like, a, it's like being oppressed, doesn't it? Like, if you're made to believe your wife nothing. So they're doing, like, the dirtiest jobs. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's say... The big man in it. Everyone mm -hmm. thinks big men's like a dirty job and all that. But they get paid well to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they can raise themselves up. I know enough of them <coughs> them men out there have got two, three yards to doing that, but they're still on the bins because it pays them well. So they've raised their families up through that. But I don't know, like in India, if it's the same thing. Like, mm. do they get paid well to do what they're doing or they're just getting dashed a few pennies to go and be moving all these dead bodies? And... Probably dashed a few pennies, by the way, it sounds to me. Mm. So they have started calling them the Harijan. Harijan means uh, the son of God. This name was given by him and in the constitution, they had made uh, equal rights for these untouchables. Although the Constitution states that people from all castes have the same right, discrimination is still prevalent in Indian society. In general, people from higher castes do not want to be anywhere near the untouchables. Um, so people from the highest caste, they don't want to be near the people from the lowest caste. Uh, so that the four castes, the highest caste were the Brahmins, the people who were into intellectuals. The second was the warrior caste. The third was the merchants, and the fourth was the caste that used to do all the manual work. So, say the merchants and the warriors, they would get along, the warriors and the Brahmins would get along, but the, the Brahmins wouldn't want to mix with the lowest caste. Until the 1950s, Indians from upper caste would not go to restaurants because they were afraid untouchables worked in the kitchen and could touch their food. But as India develops at a fast rate, people's mindset is changing in regards to caste relationship. An intercaste friendship that would be considered inappropriate 20 or 30 years ago is now becoming more and more normal. This new generation is the most open-minded generation ever in regards to the caste system. I have uh, four or five friends who are from lower class, so I don't care at all. Let's say if you're a lower class, fan, lower, lower class family, I would be able to, I would love to have a friend like you if you, you know, uh, try to be with me, if you try to lie with me. So I have a lot of, you know, the Muslims, I have Muslims friend, I have lower class uh, family friends, so I don't care at all because I am, you know, open-minded, I can say. Still, there are some people in, in my villages who you know, discriminate me because I have lower class family friends. Who discriminate me because say, oh, come on, just leave it, no, you are from a very high class family. So you are not supposed to make those friends who are from lower class. But I don't care at all because I'm very open-minded. In 1997, K.R. Narayanan was elected the president of India. He was the first and so far only Dalit person to ever be elected president. This was a huge step forward and it showed that Indians are becoming more progressive and open to end discrimination. Still today, he remains as... I guess that's like the Obama moment, isn't it? Mm-hmm. He looks black, isn't it? He's black. <laughs> Man's been in them fields. It is good though, man, and that is kind of like the power of the internet and education, and it? Like, you know, there's a lot that people say the internet does bad, but it makes the world a smaller place. So you get loads more different viewpoints on society, which shapes and molds the minds, which makes people more open-minded in an essence. I mean, it can have the opposite effect as well, <laughs> but in this instance, no. This is one of the most popular Indian presidents ever. I mean, he was accepted by everyone as the president and uh, people were happy about it because he represented a large section of the population. You think he changed people's opinion on people from different castes, on the Dalits? Definitely, yes. Definitely. For the good or for the bad? For the good. <laughs>
But not everyone is open to change. There are still many people who discriminate on people from the Dalit caste, even if they do not work with impure things. They believe that getting in contact or being anywhere near and untouchable is polluting, and that will lower them to the same level as the untouchables. हमारे यहाँ ऐसा होता है कि दूसरे जात का हमारे घर के जो बर्तन होते हैं ना वो नहीं छो सकता है और क्योंकि इसलिए One thing we'll say about this is one realizing it. I don't think it does have anything to do with color. Because the two people I've seen who are upper, like upper class, and they're talking like the one young guy, then the student who was talking like he's got lower class friends. Then this, what they, it's not like they're light skin. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't so, and it's not had any major to skin, do with but they're color. They're light skin, but they're in the sun. You know, the women will use umbrellas and try not to get burned, but the men go out, so they have the intensive okay, sun then. But if them come to England, them turn fear as fear can be. Yeah, maybe. Whereas the black one, them black all the time. <laughs> well, yeah. Mm. I also said that... Why are you क्योंकि हम लोग मीट मछली नहीं खाते हैं यही एग्जांपल आ जाते हैं ज़्यादातर और फिर और होते हैं जो खाते हैं तो इसलिए जल्दी नहीं आने देते हैं Because you know, in my culture, it's our in my culture is not allowed. We have just touched the Harijan, and I know he is a Harijan. So I go to the home and I take shower. Because they work with untouchable things. Yes, because they are working. Uh, I know. I told you uh, before. Because they are cleaning the street and they clean the toilet. They have a. We have a very special card, caste. This is so we call that Harijan. So everybody is know that. When the kids born, they know very well because I explain when they born, this this card is, uh, cast is good or this card cast is not good, and you don't touch the ham. जैसे मीना और वो रहती हैं मीना मीना जान रही थी और हम है ना तो जैसे उनके नल के भी बर्म होते हैं ना गांव में वो भी अलग होते हैं वो कुए भी मतलब जैसे अपने बर्तन को ना जैसे अगर मान ले एक किसी का एक साथ में है भी ना तो अगर हम उनके बर्तन को हाथ भी लगा द अभी भी होता है अभी भी बहुत जगह होता है होता है हमारे यहाँ पे गांव में होता है हाँ हमारे यहाँ होता है और खासकर राजगढ़ में ज़्यादा होता है ये सब Still today, in approximately 30% of rural villages, public health workers refuse to enter Dalit homes. Untouchables are prevented from entering police stations, and Dalit children are not allowed to sit with children from other castes in school. When Dalits disobey the authority, the consequences can be drastic. Every week, 13 Dalits are murdered and five Dalit homes are burned. But what happens if an untouchable goes to a temple that he should not go? What happens to him? Oh, in that case, maybe like beaten to death or... Oh, really? Yeah, it happens, beaten to death or... Depends on the situation. ...the village or... Can be violent or can be like non-violent. She does Nepalese. She does um, mm. someone who are these untouchable. Nepalese, China, you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's like Nepal and it's in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Crossover, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, China and India. When I went, to when I went to India, and I stayed with uh, some people like high class and high class system. So I think they were like Brahmin class of thing. They must have to wash everything after you touched it then. Well, no, because I come from money, so I don't know. Like, they love me. But I think they were quite open anyway. But. Oh, so. Otherwise, you just didn't see the cleaners picking I, everything I did, up behind you. Yeah. No, no, I did do it. Because yeah. I did have. They did have. <laughs> cleaners. Huh? No, I don't want to call them slaves. They're not slaves. They're, they're not slaves. Like, no, but they slaves were like servants. England. They are servants. Yeah, 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 but it was like crazy to see like the way the, they were treated in the house. In and Africa, I was all from Nepal, and it. Yeah, they have servants everywhere. Mm. I'm saying and it, there's a level of treatment, you say. So here, people have servants, what you call them servants, or you call them maids, or 
uh, what they're called. Hair tends to be more professional. Very, yeah, very. This is what I'm trying to say, like with your hair clean or whatever. But there, when I say it's the casting is working, and it. Well, that's why. but I was all Nepalese, all of them. Everyone that was in that house that was doing that. So the Nepalese fall into the caste system too. Uh, I don't know if they fall into the caste system. I just think it's a work thing. Privileged group that comes in and takes advantage of the underprivileged as usual. Yeah, I think the Nepalese people are seen as just lower in India. It's kind of like you know, lower than Dalit. Oh, lower. Well, maybe not lower, but you may more likely to trust them more and want them in your house because they're not part of the caste system any. Right, so it's yeah, like yeah. cheap labour and yeah, yeah. like you don't really For want neighbor, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah you don't really want untouchables in your house but you mm. want all your stuff doing you get foreign labour and it mm. so OP <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly I like to forcefully like drag him out from there and never come here <laughs> to try to sorry but imagine being stoned but to forcefully like drag him out from there and never come here. <coughs> to try to compensate the historical disadvantaged, the Indian government has special reservations for Dalit people for education, seats in the parliament, and public jobs. In the Indian parliament, Dalits have 24.13% of seats reserved for them. That is 131 out of 543 seats. In education, students who come from backward caste can get accepted into college with lower grades than one from a general caste. In schools, students from backward castes get scholarships. The reservation addresses the historical oppression, inequality, and discrimination faced by the Dalit people. At first, reservations were a provisional measure that was adopted after independence and was only supposed to happen for 10 years but it is still happening today. For a Dalit to get a reserve spot, they must apply for a certificate. The process to get the certificate is lengthy and bureaucratic. When they make certificate, even they send some people for survey. They will come to your house, they will ask their neighbors also, is they are from the caste or not. You know, when I have applied for my caste uh, certificate, it happens to me. People came to my house and they did a survey. So I'm also, I also have that certificate. This controversial program has been a topic for debate between Indians in the past few decades. Some argue that this helps take Dalits out of the poverty cycle, while others argue that the system is not fair for those who work hard and are part of the general castes. So, and when uh, my kids is uh, Brown, so we never think they're going to the very good English medium school because English medium school is very expensive in India. So one year price maybe 70,000 rupees, like a thousand US dollars, so I can't afford. But uh, thank God I'm a lower caste, so I have a certificate for the lower caste. So I show the certificate for the private school, they give me scholarship, like 50% off. So 35,000 rupees one year, my one children is private. So both have 70,000 rupees, so I do manage because I know value of the education. Me na hoga, Gujar hoga na. To jaise jo Gujar rehte hain, unki post jada rehte hain, to wo jaldi upar tarke kar lete hain. Aur jaise ham hoga, Kohli hoga, to inko na jaise ki sarkari aise aise inke thuru, hume jaise form hota hai na, to hume kuch maaf kya jada hai, to hum is cheez mein aage bhag jaye. Aur hume aage hum jaye. Fir hume form karne ka mauka milta hai. Nowadays they have opportunities to do other jobs also. But what is the thing like, uh, for example, a family of uh, like uh, manure uh, uh, like uh, removing from the house, that family, their whole family haven't uh, studied from their last five, six generations. So what do you think like uh, the, the son, like which is uh, the in this century, the new uh, generations, they are also like uneducated. And whatever they are learning from their parents, what they see their parents doing, they think this is our like uh, future. Until or unless they have a, another opportunity, which is like a, a certificate from the government and getting a opportunity into the to go uh, for study. Otherwise, he cannot go. His family is not making that much money to send him even into the government school, which is free. They just only charge for ten or twenty or hundred rupees for a month. So even that they cannot. It's essentially positive discrimination. Yeah. Do you think twin positive discrimination is a good thing? Yeah. 
Yeah. In the ideal, no. But in the reality, yeah. Yeah, yeah cause I always have a thing with it. Like, it's almost like, it's almost like, it's profiling in one essence, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, but then, like you said, you know, it, if it helps, it helps. But then does it mar you with that thing that you just wasn't good enough to no. to do what you were doing and you needed that assistance? Well, what it is, there's this drawing that I used to see of some kids looking over a wall tall and short. No, I've seen it, some on books and some right. like, yeah, so and yeah that's what some of them does. running it a race you, on it. Yeah, it, yeah, it gives yeah. you that, that level pegging. position. But that picture only shows one day at that moment in time, it doesn't show what happens 10 years later or how many of those people use that as motivation to get where they need to get. Because mm. success isn't about education totally. It's a com combination of things and you can be educated or uneducated and be successful 100%, in the 100%, 100%. So it gives you, like I say, that kickstart. Yeah. yeah, that person who's standing on the floor might not have the kickstart, but for you, because you had to get books before you could see what they saw. So yeah, it can help, but you can't look at one moment in time. You got to look at it all the whole time. picture. Yeah. Mm. And they can afford. So that's why they are like uh, those people have forced to do that job. There are still people, mainly from general castes, who disagree with this program. They argue that because the caste system was abolished, all Indians have equal chances. So the system should be based on meritocracy. Oh, these days, as I told you, no more meaning of the caste system. These are all systems almost disappear. So now people, they are rich or not rich, it's a depend on his quality, degree, ability, not because of the caste. Oh no, I hate the concept of reservations. Honestly, the way I think it, it should be is that it should be a meritocracy, irrespective of where you come from. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do. If you can show that you're capable, you should be allowed to be in that college. It shouldn't depend on your birth or your nationality or your origin. But, you know, and it's not just that. It's also the fact that when they do give these reservations to Dalits and, you know, other castes, it's not the needy Dalits who are discriminated against that get the seats. It's the rich ones in the community that manage to grab them. And often because they're rich and they can, they have access to these colleges, they can get in with lower grades. So it's a completely broken system in my opinion. Another common argument is that reservations should be given according to people's economic situation and not their caste. This should be based on economy not based on caste. So if you want to give reservations, give reservations to them, those who are economically poor, not those who are based on the uh, caste or the society. If Romeo and Juliet were set in India, there would be no Montagues or Capulets. Instead, there would be people from different castes. According to the Hindu tradition, marriage should only happen between the same caste. This was ensured by arranged marriage a tradition where the parents choose their children's partners. Like a 20 years before, just like a rules, the parents go to the yeah. uh, her house and they choose the girl. Yeah. And they didn't see the boy. But now, after 20 years ago, the people doing the same task, but the people talk each other, boy and boy girl. And girl. The mean... boy and girl is the happy, then parents get married. Oh, but yes. before, it is the just like a parent choose. Now, as India develops and people are becoming more broad-minded, we are seeing more and more intercaste marriages. Today, 5% of all marriages are intercaste. I'm a lower caste and see heavy, I, uh, like a middle caste. So when we get married, it's trouble in my life. Two years, her father and mother say, get out in my from here. And my father and mother say, why you not married with similar caste to men? It is the trouble. Did your parents attend your wedding? Did they go? No. No, no, no. It's Did secret. Secret, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, like secret. secret. Yeah. Even so when I got married with my husband, I live one and a half month in my mom's house. And he is always pushing me, please meet me, please meet me. No, no, my mom is not happy. <laughs> so one month I'm not meet my husband, I just call on the phone. I ask to my mom, I love Rishi and I went with Rishi, but my mom said no, is a 
different community and is a lower class is not okay. Yeah, he is my Romeo. I am Julia. <laughs> yeah. Today, only one in five millennials are against it. But especially in the rural areas, it is considered shameful to marry someone from another caste. And the consequences range from getting ostracized to beaten to death. But do people still marry people from different castes? Or never? No. Never? It doesn't happen? No. And what happens if they do marry? Then they kick out from societies. In some extreme cases, young people have committed suicide after their parents prohibited them from marrying someone from a different caste. To try to make intercaste marriage more acceptable, the Indian government provides many facilities to intercaste couples. If you have an intercaste marriage, the government of India gives a lot of facilities. For example, if you marry, if I marry anybody from another caste, I get a better privilege and my children get better privileged than any other children. So in India, as a government, government promotes it. But some people think the other way, but it's changing rapidly. The caste system is connected to almost everything in India, even its health problem. In the Indian subcontinent, India is by far the wealthiest and most developed country. Yet, they have a higher infant mortality rate than Myanmar, Bangladesh, and even Nepal. The reason for this has a direct link to the caste system. India's sanitation is still poor. 732 million people do not have access to toilets, and that represents 56% of the population. Traditionally, Indians have always defecated in the open. Open defecation is when people relieve themselves in a field, a roadside, a riverbank, or a forest, for example. They do so not only due to poverty, but also because human feces are impure, and they should not be inside the house. Today, around 50% of Indians defecate in the open. This rate is 10% higher than the rate in some of the poorest sub-Saharan countries like the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Uganda. The problem with open defecation is that no one will collect the feces. So after it rains, the bacteria will fall into water, streams, and crops, thus polluting them. The local population who depend on those resources are going to eat and drink contaminated water and food, which causes many diseases, like guinea worm, typhoid, cholera, and dysentery. There is a type of toilet that is used to solve this problem. It is known as a pit toilet. This pit toilet has a latrine that is connected to one of two pits. People will relieve themselves and the feces will travel to the pit through the pipe. The pit will take two to five years to get full depending on the size of it. After one is full, the family will start using the other pit. All they must do is connect the pipe to the empty pit. When the second pit is full, it will be enough time so that the feces in the first pit have decomposed and this becomes manure. This makes it both spiritually clean and safe for people to handle. People are aware that human waste, after decomposition, it is converted into manure. That's a good manure. But they don't want to touch the fresh human waste. The Indian government is now building this type of toilet for people. However, mainly due to corruption, they often only build one pit instead of two. This takes away the whole point of avoiding handling fresh human waste. Because when the pit is full, there is not enough time for the feces to decompose. So they will have to handle the fresh human waste. In response, many people who have toilets with only one pit in their house prefer to continue doing open defecation. Another big problem is that many people do not want human feces to be anywhere near their houses because it is spiritually polluting. So even if they have a toilet with two pits, they will do open defecation. This is why awareness is just as important as building toilets. Before construction, we start awareness. First, we aware the people of that village where we started construction. And after awareness, we start construction. Then they will use. Otherwise, if you construct the toilet and then ask the people, you have to use the they will not. Sometimes they will use this toilet room, they will convert it into a store room. Awareness is very most important. 
So we are doing awareness first and then we start. In neighboring Bangladesh, a much more impoverished country than India, they suffered from a cholera pandemic 20 years ago that had direct causes to open defecation. Since then, the Bangladeshi government has started to build one-pit toilets just like in India for the people. The only difference is that Bangladesh is a Muslim country with no caste system. So after the pit is full, people will handle the fresh human waste and dispose of it safely. Surely the Bangladeshis do not enjoy doing this dirty job, but it is not spiritually polluting to them, and they do not suffer discrimination, so they do it for their good. The caste system is becoming less critical to Indians now than what it was during the colonial time, but the discrimination is still there. It is affecting everyone in all aspects of society, and as long as this system stays in place, inequality in India will persist. Okay, so what did you uh, what did you think? Did you learn anything new about the caste system? Uh, it's changing apparently. <laughs> That's a time really thing, isn't it? I don't know. Like I said, yo, money run things. You know, whatever was going on in the world before. Is not going on now. I think every society it's is changing. centered around money. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You know, the rich have always existed. There was always the Maharajas and all these things, and lots of poor people. So that caste system could be, like I said, divide and rule. So what do you think? Do you think? Because obviously, this this country has a caste system. Right? You have upper class, middle class, lower class, mm -hmm. right? Indeed, and then yeah. the poor. I don't know if it was ever, I mean, and I can actually assume that it was like that. You know, the upper class only married the upper class, middle class only married middle class, working class only married working class. Well, and then lower you'd class say only married lower class. Upper class were proper with upper class people, but I don't think there was ever only. You know, lords plundered the poor people in this country in exactly the same way. Um, for example, you know, back in the day, like I said they used to have when you was married the landowner could come and sleep with your wife first that was the idea of the yeah 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 that, uh, pre, pre Menatra. so all that stuff was going on here it's just their story doesn't talk about it here and looking at India the caste system is prevalent now but that same system applies here like you said conservatives and the rich elites do not mix with you know the inner city sufferer generally mm-hmm um, it's a British system and it's ruled by the Brits so mm -hmm. it's going to work it's the same system in Jamaica I believe you know bleaching, the sales of bleaching cream in all these areas Jamaica, Africa, Asia is through the roof so, yeah that's bleaching a lot I see the one well, thing that isn't is, that again like but I this said, is what I'm saying it's colour coded, the perception of it is the higher tone people generally are allowed across because because they're the higher that. tone in the story the higher tone but i don't know that this is what i'm saying that video didn't make that clear to me well the basis for higher tone is that the aryans were higher tone so if you're higher tone but this is what i'm also trying to say like from the comments i'm getting the thing this whole yeah. aryan thing is like a myth in india about aryans going to europeans going to india and aryans that it's like a myth I've, I've actually someone sort of told me a video a to watch that Europeans went to India no about like the Aryans in India like it, there's a lot of misconception about the Aryans because I was speaking to someone mm -hmm. but they told me a video to watch what, so I'm gonna what's pull the that misconception off. there uh, well I'm going to watch it, it? I'm gonna say, there's a good theory for India. 
Ooh, no, there's a theory that's saying that Aryans came there rather than being born there. Yeah, they came. They came. No, nah, no. So that's what the, the, the Indians are saying. They said that from Asia, they came from Asia. But I'm saying to you, there's theories that they're saying they, they didn't. They didn't come from there. They're like Indians, basically. So we'll see, any But yeah, so I personally, as I said from that video, I didn't really get the whole the colour issue and maybe that was just the way the video was made he didn't want to put prevalence maybe on it maybe he couldn't <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah maybe he didn't want to um, so yeah I mean the cast system like I said we've got one here we'll always have one here and I think these things are never really going to go away until society is completely intermingled any. until it has intermingled and What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Intercaste relationships, if that's what you want to say. And I'm thinking like, like cohesive. biracial, cohesive relationships as well. It's like I was saying, you're never really going to get rid of racism, ever. No matter how many people want to tell you there's racism. So as long as there's still English flags, borders, and things that govern from laws that were made 100 years ago, then you're never really going to get rid of it. The flags of empire. So that's the, the colonial thing. thing before that, like I said. But it's the same thing, isn't it? Like a lot of racism is born out of that whole I'm English, I'm British, mm. I'm here, I'm a natural citizen of this place, everyone else isn't. Uh, and like it's uh, it's like another way of patriotism. I don't know isn't if it? it's Englishness or Europeanness, isn't it? Because it's no, the it's... European that's invading the world, it's not the English specifically yeah, I'm talking about England because I live in England don't I? Yeah. but you're right yeah but you're right but I'm just saying here so in India I don't know if it's the same thing I felt like it was a bit different to that I don't feel like I just felt like it was more because there's no real what's the word I'm looking for it's not xenophobia is it here is xenophobia it's people coming from the outside in theirs isn't that it's the people who are there like having that um mm. and and it's hidden in the religion like you say it is like i said it's a hindu thing but i would like to know what the hindu text actually says about it because like they said before the british came there was social mobility you could move then the british just made that rigid because mm -hmm. they didn't understand the text but yeah anyway that was the caste system in india Shout out to everyone who watches the videos. Let us know. Um, let us know more because people are giving me some good information in the comments. So I'm enjoying reading them and seeing what people have to say. Um, let us know if it is a colour-based thing or it's just a regional-based thing because I, I personally didn't get that from this video. Um, anything to say, Pop, to round yeah, it up? I'm good, man. All right, we out. Peace. Peace.